Welcome, caring viewers, to this week's edition of Science and Spirituality on Supreme Master Television. Many decades ago, a great scientist, Albert Einstein, attempted to formulate the unified field theory, also known as the theory of everything, a formula that marries all of the forces of nature into a single doctrine. However, he was ultimately not successful in reaching his goal during his lifetime. Now in this golden age, scientists have continued Einstein's noble endeavor to further explore the very nature of existence. One of these individuals is Dr. John Hagelin. Well, physics has come a long way, especially in the last 12 years since the superstring revolution, where we have, to a good degree, fulfilled Einstein's lifelong dream to discover the unified source of the diversified universe to discover the fundamental unity at the basis of the surface complexity of the universe. Mm -hmm. So the unified field is that fundamental field of intelligence at the basis of all forms and phenomena in the universe. Dr. Hagelin is a world-renowned vegetarian quantum physicist who received his PhD from Harvard University, USA. He is currently the director of the Institute of Science, Technology, and Public Policy, a leading science and technology think tank, and international director of the Global Union of Scientists for Peace, an organization of leading scientists throughout the world dedicated to ending nuclear proliferation. He has led studies on the nature of consciousness and is a leader among those working to bring together science and our spiritual heritage. Dr. Hagelin has developed the grand unified field theory based on the superstring, a formulation he says achieves Einstein's vision and the application of which can bring about peace in our world. His work is an extension of string theory, which says everything is based on one-dimensional, unimaginably small loop-shaped particles that vibrate like violin strings. The particular vibration determines the characteristic of an object and the things that it will experience. Let us now learn more about his findings. Would you give us a brief overview of the unification theories in physics? But modern science has explored deeper levels of reality, mm -hmm. more fundamental space-time scales, starting at the macroscopic sensory level, getting on to the molecular, atomic, nuclear, subnuclear mm -hmm. levels, to the electroweak unified field theory for which several Nobel Prizes have been given, to grand unification and now super unification mm -hmm. where all four forces of nature, including gravity, mm -hmm. electromagnetism, radioactivity, the nuclear force become one. Mm -hmm. And all the so-called particles of nature also become unified mm -hmm. in the single unified universal field of intelligence at the origin of the universe, wow. at the basis of space and time. That's what the unified field theory is. We next asked Dr. Hagelin to further explain the nature of the universal field of intelligence. Physics has discovered something beyond matter, something non-material, because the material world really stops at about the atomic level. Mm -hmm. Subnuclear particles, like photons, quarks, these aren't particles at all. They are expressions of intelligence. They are vibrational modes of a universal field or superstring field. Mm -hmm. So we've gone beyond matter into quantum mechanics, mm -hmm. then quantum field theory, and today unified quantum field theory. We've left matter behind in physics. Mm -hmm. We're now about the study of intelligence. Mm -hmm. And so we have this fundamental field in mm -hmm. physics, which is a field of intelligence, not dead intelligence dynamic intelligence, self-interacting, self-aware intelligence. So physics has really encountered, stumbled upon the field mm -hmm. of consciousness, pure mm -hmm. subjectivity at the basis of the objective reality of matter. Mm -hmm. Physicists have really probed beyond the limits of matter and are into the exploration of the fundamental intelligence that gave birth to the universe, fundamental intelligence that governs the universe. So what is the relationship between unity, diversity, and individuality? Our true self is our deep inner self, field of consciousness, mm -hmm. field of subjectivity, the I within all of us, that which experiences. 
It's different from your beliefs. It's different from anything specific about your life. It is the non-specific field of pure subjectivity, that which knows, that which sees, that is beyond the mind, beyond the intellect, even beyond emotion. Mm -hmm. That is the true self. That pure consciousness within is the unified field, mm -hmm. now being explored by physics. So individuality, this field, of course, is universal. Mm -hmm. field of universal consciousness mm -hmm. at our inner core. But from that ocean of universal consciousness swells up waves of individual consciousness. Mm -hmm. From individual consciousness, ego, comes individual mind, individual senses, individual body. Individuality is just a localized wave on the universal ocean of being, universal ocean of consciousness. Mm -hmm. In meditation, for example, I mean, mm -hmm. effective meditation, that takes you all the way to that level of universal consciousness. In meditation, you experience the universal, unbounded nature of consciousness, our universal self, and you experience the emergence of individual mind, mm -hmm. individual self, individual thoughts, and body mm -hmm. from that universality. So modern science is in a position to say, yes, that's, that's true, that's how it works, but long before the superstring. Um, the ancient sciences of consciousness and the deep philosophical and spiritual traditions of the world have talked about the fundamental unity of life mm -hmm. and have even given techniques of prayer or meditation. Not any prayer, not any meditation, but specific techniques of meditation that actually take the awareness so deeply within that our inner universal silent self is open to direct experience. For years, physicists have searched for an all-encompassing unified theory, a theory of everything, or a coherent set of laws that describe all forces of nature. It is thought that such a formulation could provide answers to all the mysteries of the universe, including creation itself. Dr. John Hagelin, a respected vegetarian quantum physicist from the USA, has developed the grand unified field theory based on the superstring which he says reveals the ultimate unity underlying all life, confirming the timeless wisdom of the ages. We asked Dr. Hagelin what his findings mean for us and whether we can tap into this unity to better our world. How can one access the unified field, the super unified field? Even though we all have consciousness, by virtue of which I can see you and hear you in mm -hmm. this. Consciousness is necessary for any experience, mm -hmm. but consciousness itself is unexperienced. It's, it's the experiencer. Consciousness rarely, if ever, has the experience of itself. Mm -hmm. It is always outwardly directed to one thing or one person or another. A thought, an idea, an emotion, an object, a person. Mm -hmm. That's not consciousness. Those are objects of consciousness. So it's interesting, in order to experience our own subjectivity, in order to know our own consciousness, our own self, you need a technique. Mm -hmm. You need a technique to take the outwardly directed attention and turn that attention powerfully within to experience and explore deeper levels of mind, deeper levels of human intelligence, deeper levels of consciousness, absolute universal consciousness remains. Mm -hmm. Consciousness aware of itself, self-awareness. That's the meditative state. Mm -hmm. And for that, a technique is necessary. Mm -hmm. Just because we have a lifetime of habit of the attention flowing purely without, we need to turn it around and teach it basically to go within. Dr. Hagelin says that transcendental meditation, a meditation technique developed by Maharshi Mahesh Yogi, can take one into this deeper level of consciousness. Many scientific studies have concluded that heightened states of awareness can be achieved during meditation. Those who are regular practitioners of meditation report that the experience of an intense, restful state of mind causes constructive psychological changes and improved quality of life. And interestingly enough, that experience is of fundamental importance, even for education, for example, because that experience alone engages the total brain. 
It brings what's called global, EEG, coherence, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maximally expanded comprehension, which becomes more and more stabilized. Mm -hmm. We have that broad comprehension stabilized, global EEG coherence mm -hmm. permanently established. That leads to increased intelligence, creativity, memory, moral reasoning, academic performance, learning ability, reaction time, alertness. Everything good about the mind mm -hmm. depends on its systematic <laughs> development. And that development occurs not so much through reading, writing, and arithmetic. Mm -hmm. That development occurs most rapidly and most completely through the experience of unbounded awareness, the meditative state. You have mentioned the benefits and implications of the uh, super unified field, and you mentioned education. Why is it applied? It's a very interesting question because, you know, scientists are talking about the unified field today. Finally, they've gotten to that level of ultimate reality. Mm -hmm. But in terms of applying it, right now today, even with particle accelerators, as sophisticated as they are, mm -hmm. there's no real technology to utilize that most fundamental and powerful level of nature's mm -hmm. functioning, except through the human nervous system, through a subjective technology of consciousness. Mm -hmm. That experience of expanded comprehension develops the brain holistically. Mm -hmm. Not in a fragmented way. You, you can study, like I did, 15 years of physics. You can develop this sliver of the brain here. Mm -hmm. Or you can study music and develop this sliver over here. But in terms of holistic development, which is enlightenment, mm -hmm. higher states of consciousness, you need this more fundamental experience of the big self. So the application of the unified field is a side effect of experiencing it. And the experience of the unified field is what develops the total brain, what mm -hmm. develops enlightenment. Dr. Hagelin strongly believes that all educational systems should include meditation practice in their curriculum to enhance students' level of performance and overall lives. There are maybe 700 studies published in the world's top scientific journals showing that this experience, the meditative state, mm -hmm. develops the total brain, develops IQ, mm -hmm. improves learning ability, gets rid of ADHD, which is a terrible epidemic today. And we've got to have something that will really work to give our children a chance, especially children who are locked in these pressure cookers of stress, give them a chance to really succeed in life. It has been in place long enough to have done uh, a lot of published research already showing Mm -hmm. improved academic performance, radically reduced suspension rates, increased graduation rates, better self-esteem, less violence, less fights, less disciplinary infractions, and so forth. In fact, there's one school in San Francisco which was notorious mm -hmm. for its violence. That school turned around so profoundly through a number of innovative improvements, but including implementation of TM in what's called a quiet time program, mm -hmm. time out twice a day, mm -hmm. that that school improved so much that the principal of that school was awarded two years ago by former President George W. Bush with the Middle School Principal of the Year Award. Mm -hmm. Most successful principal of the country awarded that because of his ability to turn that school around, and TM was a critical component mm -hmm. of the transformation of that school. Dr. John Hagelin is dedicated to applying the advances of science to benefit humanity. Join us September 20th, 2010 for part two of our interview with Dr. Hagelin, where he will speak about the power of group meditation and the Maharshi effect. For more details on Dr. Hagelin, please visit www.hagelin.org.